Hello, and welcome to this episode of Product of the Week. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. In today's episode, we'll be looking at, thank you, Richard, the Microbit V2, what makes this thing awesome, and why I couldn't wait to get my hands on this thing when it first came out. For those who may not know, the BBC Micro, which is commissioned by the BBC, but I'm not quite sure if they actually make the board, actually takes its name from a machine that the BBC made in the 1980s, the BBC Micro. So have a quick Google around that and you can see what made that computer awesome and this one as well. We all know and love the Microbit, a small development board designed by the BBC, whose primary goal is to encourage young minds to explore the world of programming. And in the seven years that the Microbit had been around, it certainly had a significant impact on education. But like all technology, the numerous advances that had taken place in the field of electronics saw the BBC Microbit fall behind. Well, back in 2020, the engineers responsible for the Microbit recognized that the need to add new features to the Microbit was essential. And so, in their infinite wisdom, developed the Microbit V2. What makes the Microbit V2 and its predecessor awesome is that they offer users an entire hardware platform in a single device, offering all kinds of I.O., sensors, and capabilities. Furthermore, this hardware platform can be used with numerous coding environments, including a block editor, which doesn't even require users to know how to program in modern computer languages, such as C and C++. This means that, right out of the box, you can connect your microbit to a computer, launch the in-browser block editor, and get straight to making advanced programs. But the inclusion of an onboard speaker, microphone, and increased performance is what makes the Microbit V2 an excellent addition to the Microbit range. What this translates to is the ability to create far more projects, especially audio-related ones, such as voice recorders, synthesizers, and interactive devices. At the heart of the Microbit V2, is the Nordic NRF52833 SOC, which itself incorporates a 64 MHz ARM Cortex-M4 with an FPU, a 512 kilobytes of flash, and 128 kilobytes of RAM. Compared to the previous Microbit, which used an NRF51822, a 16 MHz ARM Core, 256 kilobytes of flash, and 16 kilobytes of RAM, the NRF52833 provides far more processing power, memory capabilities, and the ability to deal with floating point numbers more easily. In addition to the improved CPU and memory, the NRF52833 also integrates Bluetooth Low Energy, supporting Bluetooth Mesh, NFC, Thread, and Zigbee, all of which are needed to produce modern IoT and low energy devices. Furthermore, the NRF52833 also incorporates a Bluetooth direction finding radio, which can be used for determining the location of a device relative to another Bluetooth source. This can be super handy when designing tracking and positioning devices, such as an asset tracker. Moving away from the processor, which is clearly obscenely capable and has me wondering if I could use that in my own future products, the Microbit V2 incorporates all the bells and whistles that the previous board provided, including a 5x5 LED matrix, multiple buttons, compass, accelerometer, and an edge connector that is easy to use with banana plugs and alligator clips. But the Microbit V2 also integrates a speaker and microphone, which allows users to create all kinds of audio-related projects. Additionally, a new low-power mode can help the Microbit V2 operate on battery power for extended periods of time, something which the first Microbit simply cannot compete on. When it comes to projects, the Microbit V2 can be used for all kinds of crazy contraptions. To start, the combination of the low power mode and low energy Bluetooth makes the Microbit V2 an excellent candidate for any battery powered project. For example, this could include wearables such as a wrist worn compass, an IoT monitoring device such as a door open detector, and even as a human presence detector, using the onboard microphone to detect the presence of conversations and moving furniture. On the topic of Bluetooth, the ability for the NRF52833 to support Bluetooth direction finding 
also makes the Microbit V2 an excellent choice for those looking to create asset trackers. Just like how Apple tags can be used to locate lost items, the Microbit V2 could be programmed to not only allow for the tracking of assets, but emit a sound when signaled to do so. Of course, such a project would be physically large, but this won't matter for those learning about electronics or those looking to track something a little bit larger than house keys. Personally, I would want to use this on myself so my wife can find me when I get lost in Tesco's, which was a very sad day for me, standing like a lost puppy holding onto a pack of beans. It's just very sad. The inclusion of the microphone and speaker also makes the Microbit V2 an excellent candidate for audio related projects. For example, you could use this to create a simple synthesizer, help tune your horrendous voice, sorry, sorry, I mean brilliant and angelic like voice, uh, but of course when I say angel, I mean the biblically accurate version with the rotating rings and the many eyes. Never mind. And even as an audio listening device. Finally, the educational value of the Microbit V2 is honestly unmatched by any other product out there. While connecting to external circuits is a tad more complex compared to other dev kits, as there are no header pins or sockets, the numerous onboard sensors combined with the make code environment means that anyone can get started with coding, whether you are six or 60. So if you are an educator, seriously consider the micro bit because honestly, this thing absolutely rocks. It is rare for a sequel to be decent, let alone awesome. You only need to see the numerous series and films trying to use a multiverse as a pathetic attempt to rope in new characters that simply quite don't belong, whether it's due to poor writing or poor casting. But the Microbit V2, however, is definitely the Empire Strikes Back exception, arguably being the better of the two Microbit variations. The extra sensors and increased processing power means that more complex projects are now possible, and the low energy capabilities means that this board can last for a lot longer on batteries compared to its predecessor. Finally, the inclusion of the microphone and speaker means that the Microbit V2 can be used in all kinds of exciting audio projects, especially those that irritate parents with the use of high pitch whining sound effects. If you like what we do here at Electromaker and want to support my constant need for attention, then consider heading over to the Electromaker store where you can find this and all the other bits and bobs you could ever need for your next project. This is Robin Mitchell, signing off. Music